This is a decoration I made for Halloween. It's just a cardboard monster trying to eat a spinning plastic pumpkin. Except that this pumpkin isn't actually there. Now that's not just some screen projection. It does actually look like a solid object spinning there. And you, you have to really see this effect in person. Um, viewing on video, you don't have the benefits of your binocular vision giving you depth perception. I could try moving the camera around. Show you that. Give you a bit of parallax. Another way to convince you that it does look like a solid object is to take this laser pointer. Show you that it does seem to be hitting something solid, but there isn't actually anything there. Like this LED. I'm going to switch it off. seem like there's an object there that the LED is illuminating. Of course, again, there isn't actually anything there. Laser pointers can still interact with it. It still seems to be reflecting off of it. So what is this? This is a real image. You can generate a real image by reflecting an actual solid object, a physically real object. The light reflects off of it onto a parabolic concave mirror. And the actual object is upside down. Uh, this is just a uh, came from an LED decoration from Poundland and it's sitting on top of a geared down motor and a couple of LEDs illuminating it. There are a number of videos on YouTube that explain how a real image is formed in a concave mirror but I think these two shown here are the best ones for demonstrating how this illusion works. I used a DC motor that's been geared down, I believe, either 300 to 1 or, or 1000 to 1. It has to spin very slowly. And it's powered by about 4.5 volts, three AA batteries. Uh, I just need a suitable enclosure, a cardboard box. And I'm cutting up some packaging to use to build up a block that I can stick the motor onto. I could use hot glue to stick the DC motor onto this um, corrugated cardboard, uh, but double sticky back tape will suffice. The spinning uh, pumpkin will be illuminated by a couple of LEDs, light emitting diodes, uh, before connecting them up to the wires. Uh, be sure to tin all the leads in advance. I soldered the cathodes of the two LEDs together with a connecting wire and then soldered the cathode of one LED to one of the terminals on the DC motor. Uh, using another connecting wire I soldered the anodes of the LEDs together as well so that the LEDs end up being in parallel but they are together in series with the DC motor. So in effect the DC motor is going to be like a current limiting resistor and in my tests with a 4.5 volt supply I found that we averaged at around 13 milliamps so that's not going to burn out the LEDs but 
depending on what components you're using, you might want to put in a current limiting resistor. Now to give it a quick test with the batteries, just to make sure I have the polarity correct. And the voltage is low enough that if this is connected up incorrectly, it won't, shouldn't damage anything. Now I'll solder up the battery supply onto the anodes of the LEDs, just to one of them since they are connected, and on also to the other terminal of the DC motor, putting it in series. This battery pack comes from a Primark uh, indoor Christmas lights. I'm securing the LEDs in place with some gaffer tape. Uh, tape with a pretty strong adhesive, i.e. not masking tape, should suffice for this. It only has to last for a few days. And now give it a quick test to see that everything is working. Cut some black cardboard. This will be used to mask off anything you don't want to show up reflected in the mirror. Um, so it'll, you just have to cover half of this um, enclosure and leaving just the spinning pumpkin visible. You'll also need some pieces of cardboard or uh, black cardboard or black paper can be used as well to darken the inside of the box as you don't want that to be illuminated by the LEDs and showing up in the, de in the um, final um, decoration. You can glue or use double sticky back tape to affix this um, mounted DC motor and LEDs to the inside of the box. And if you made this block of corrugated cardboard the right height or thickness, it would allow the pumpkin to spin freely without hitting anything inside of the box. The concave parabolic mirror comes from a toy called a mirror scope that produces this optical illusion of a solid object floating on the top which is actually an image of whatever item is placed in the bottom of this device. It consists of two parabolic mirrors, you just need one of them and I got this from the Science Museum. It's not really a hologram, it's just an optical illusion producing a real image being reflected in two parabolic mirrors that are facing each other. Get some more cardboard packaging material. Cut a shin to it that can be folded into a stand for the parabolic mirror so that it can be propped up fully vertically. Um, this, this is uh, slightly at an angle, so it's facing slightly upwards at a shallow angle. Now assemble the, the spinning pumpkin and put in the black cardboard to block out anything that you don't want to show in the mirror. I've also placed a strip of double sticky back tape on the top. This is to attach the cardboard monster onto the top so that you won't be able to see that there is actually this parabolic mirror behind it. And here it is completed. You may notice that the flaws in the mirror show up in the video, especially when I move the camera around. However, in practice, uh, because you're focusing on the real image of the pumpkin and it is at a different depth than the mirror itself, you tend not to notice these flaws uh, as much in person. Uh, they're, they're sort of like out of focus and also your, your eyes are not converged on that, on, on any of the, uh, like that hole in the back of the mirror for instance. The effect also only works on a very narrow field of view. So you can only move your head like maybe 10 centimeters on either side um, before the uh, pumpkin just vanishes. So this would best be placed maybe at arm's length and, and at the near the eye level of those you want to see it. So it will be lower down if it's for the kids or higher up for the adults. And this doesn't have to be done only for Halloween. Maybe you can create something like this for 
other events.